The Pan-African Parliament is expected to elect a new president this week. The Continental Legislature convenes at the Gallagher Convention Centre in Midrand today. The last session failed to elect a leader of the Pan-African Parliament as regions could not agree on an election system. The Southern African Group called for rotational basis when leaders are elected. For more on this, let's bring in our colleague Kailithe Kumalo, who is at the Parliament. A very good morning to you, Kailithe. You've been there since morning. What can you tell us? Well, that's right, Desri. So it, it's quite a very significant moment for this Pan-African Parliament, uh, like you just alluded. The last time they sat here, there, were, there was bickering. Uh, there was a sheer pandemonium and uh, not really quite uh, very good scenes uh, presenting a good light about uh, this particular institution, especially given the very enormous challenges uh, that, are, that they are facing the continent. Uh, of course, uh, the MPs, uh, they've started uh, streaming in. A lot of them really are very cautiously optimistic about the business of the week, uh, that they will get down to the breast tax and address all these critical issues facing the continent around food insecurity. We do know that uh, the nutrition uh, and the food is, is one of the very central themes uh, for the African Union for this year. Uh, and Desiree joining us now is one of the presidential candidates uh, from Malawi, of course, uh, that's Mr. Yeremia Chihanese. Thank you so much indeed for your time once again. You say you're ready to take this institution to the greater heights. Do you think this time around you're going to have a consensus to choose a new leadership without squabbling, without bickering, without an awfully bad pandemonium? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, indeed, it is very, very important to set a new tone and image, a new image for the Pan-African Parliament and to choose uh, the leadership without squabbles and the, in a very good, uh, harmonious way. Um, and, uh, uh, as we're looking at harmonizing Africa, especially uniting Africa, Southern Africa playing host to this, we should really be seen to be very cautious and serious uh, the way we're going to approach the subject matter at hand. Um, let's also appreciate the principle that has been accepted by the AU, United, uh, African Union, that we should follow the rule of the rotation. And I'm seeing that if we're not following the rule of the rotation, the problem may arise again because uh, I'm seeing a candidate from South Sudan and I'm see, um, I've just held, but I didn't know that there's also a candidate from Zimbabwe. And uh, that is going to cause a lot of problems. Uh, I must admit, and I'm seeing a problem. Uh, as a candidate, I was expecting challenges from uh, Eswatini, uh, Botswana, uh, uh, Zambia, and maybe Malawi. But uh, I didn't expect any challenge from Zimbabwe. I, I don't even dream of having a challenge from Zimbabwe. And what does that mean for unity? So if Southern African bloc already has two candidates, I mean, surely that speaks to a bloc that is not united behind one particular candidate. Is that a bad thing? Uh, in the first place, let me assure you, there, is no, there are no two candidates. There is only one candidate who is the Honorable Chihana. Well, but Charambira is quite determined that he is a candidate as well. I have just heard from you that he is a candidate. Under the rotational principles, Zimbabwe is already out. And that, those are the sources of problems. Last time it was Charumbira causing problems. This time again, if it is he's coming back, it is Charumbira who caused problems. I'm hearing from you that he is standing because under the rotational principle, I was expecting a Swatini, uh, Botswana, uh, Zambia uh, to stand. And uh, Botswana is going for elections in one year's time. Eswatini is going for elections in one uh, six months or so time. And uh, indeed, uh, Zambia has just come out of elections. Uh, the biggest contender to this was supposed to be Zambia. But unfortunately, they will be sworn in today. Maybe they may not have had the time. I, didn't, I don't even expect any challenge from, uh, from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is not already out of the context under rotational principle. Okay. If AU is going to miss, represent the principle of rotation, because Zimbabwe is seen to be taking it all, they're going to collapse AU. Okay. Uh, what, the, what do you make of uh, the, now the representation of the legal counsel from the AU to make sure that there is harmony, there is peace, and the House is able to get down to business? Uh, the representation from AU has come to this business just one for one thing, to receive nominations. And that is the principle. Then number two, to interpret rotation to the core, within the caucuses and outside caucuses. The caucuses, which are five, have agreed, all the caucuses, the French-speaking North Africa, have agreed to the principle of rotation. 
it is only within South African caucus which we should also agree to the principle of rotation. We are seeking the rotation, the rotation must be followed and we must demonstrate that we are seeking for a good cause. We should not do it with a blind eye that we had something, an ill motive towards us that we are maybe blocking the French speaking countries. No, we must be seen that we are uniting block and we are able to unite Africa. Yet if at all Zimbabwe will not respect the rule of rotation, it will be the cause for the legal team which has come here to properly interpret the rotation. That is uh, the only thing which will solve the problems here. Just, just before I let you go, sir, you say you're ready to run this institution to make sure that it's representing the voices of the Africans. If you were to be elected, what would you do in terms of encouraging the member states to ratify Malabo Protocol to make sure that it's given all the full legislative powers as opposed to being an advisory body currently? Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, the immediate, uh, very, very big and daunting task which I'm taking over as a leader, it is the way we've been campaigning, especially Southern Africa. We've seen the French-speaking countries as our enemies, our divers adversaries. My immediate responsibility is to harmonize and unite the, the continent so that we speak with one voice and we understand one another. And from there, it will be very easy as a united team together to forge ahead with a legislative framework which he perhaps should be, should, should be exposed to and should be doing. You know, we have taken too long to harmonize ourselves and to look at the problems which Africa is facing. For example, the climate change is a very, very, very big thing. Whatever happened in KZN is something which we can reflect on. The volcano in the DRC, something we can, which we can reflect on. We have the river Congo in the DRC. We have the blue white now. But the, the energy the, crisis, the, look at here, it's dark. Exactly, the energy mm. crisis, the, the river Congo, the Nile River, the, the Zambezi River. Just these can give us proper energy provision, but we don't have proper priorities. Perhaps should be able to lobby and uh, mitigate such kind of factors in a co collective and with one voice, we should be able to come up with a solution to the energy crisis. All right, uh, Mr. Chihana, thank you so much indeed, sir, for your time. So, there's quite a charismatic and very optimistic Mr. Chihana. He's ready, really, to ascend into power. But of course, uh, tomorrow is going to be crunch time for the Pan African Parliament that's when the election is going to happen but of course you can really tell that there are still visible divisions currently southern africa there are two candidates there is mr chief fortune charambira from zimbabwe and of course mr yeromeo who we just spoke to from malawi so it does show that there is no unity yet in terms of endorsing one candidate. East Africa also does have its own candidates. Uh, that's of course uh, Mr. Aboj. He's also quite determined that he's going to win. So it's going to be a very interesting session. And we saw last year, Desiree, where they were saying no, ro no rotation, no vote. So we're going to see whether we're going to see a repeat of that or there'll be a change of heart in terms of how events will play out. Kaya, last year's session saw Mr. Chirumbira being the mooted candidate. What are his chances looking like this time around? Well, he's the one, especially because where, when you talk to uh, the SADC bloc, uh, there was one particular time where his campaign manager went to Zimbabwe to the State House uh, to meet with Zimbabwean President Emerson Nangango. So there was a very clear point that now SADC is fully behind him. They are throwing their weight behind him. But of course, now. Uh, Mr. Yeremia uh, Chihana from Malawi has also said, well, I'm also throwing my hat in the ring. So it's really plunging everything into a bit of a crisis because it shows that now there are two candidates. And uh, from his own point of view, he says this is part of strengthening democracy where there are so many candidates as opposed to having one. But of course, it does really render things slightly chaotic because then they're not really united to one particular person. Well, nothing wrong with a bit of competition, but we hope there'll be more order this time around. Kailithe, uh, thank you so much for updating us.